Shalom. It's a joy again to be with you uh, on Your Jewish Connection. I'm Rabbi Stewart, your host, and it's my delight to have my beloved wife, Chantal, here with me. We've been married for 40 years, and she's co-founder of a Messianic Jewish ministry that we founded together called Reach Initiative International. And uh, today we want to uh, help you with some practical tips to help you have a successful marriage. Stay tuned. I'm here with my beloved wife. I'm Rabbi Stewart, and this is your Jewish Connection. We just celebrated our 40th anniversary. Yay, Yay. and we are just uh, enjoying life together. You know, marriage is a God idea, and marriage is a good idea, and uh, it's a lifelong covenant between uh, a man and a woman, a husband and wife, with God right in the middle of it all. And... uh, You know, we were talking, and you put it just right. You said, after 40 years together, we don't love each other more because we've been kind of loving each other with all that we are, but we love each other better. That's right. And I think that's the way it should be with marriage. And why is it that we love each other better? Because as it's written in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, you know, uh, there's some very wise, very Jewish and very godly advice given by Rabbi Shaul, who's better known as the Apostle Paul. He said, let love be your highest aim. And what kind of love is he talking about? Is it emotional, romantic love? Not primarily, although that's cool stuff too. But I think what he's talking about here is the kind of God love that is sacrificial and giving rather than taking, giving for the benefit of others. That's the kind of love he's talking about. Yes, yes, that's true. And and as we're moving along with age and we're striving to love each other better, then we learn a few things, right? Yeah, we learn a few things. We learn that it's selflessness, not selfishness, that's going to win the game in marriage. And, you know, I just want to encourage all of you you know, one of the first verses, I introduced my wife to the Lord uh, more than 40 years ago, and one of the first verses that I showed her in the Bible was that verse written by Apostle Paul, Rabbi Shaul. And by the way, he doesn't have two names. It's kind of like me. I have a Hebrew name, Shlomo, which means Solomon, and uh, Stuart, which is my English name. And he had a Hebrew name, which was Shaul. And he had more of a kind of Roman Greek name, which was Paul. So it was the same guy. He didn't change his name when he became a follower of Yeshua because we all know he didn't really start a new religion called Christianity. He was a Jewish man who made the most Jewish decision a Jewish person could make, and that is to follow after the promised Jewish Messiah, Jesus, Yeshua. And uh, 1 Corinthians 13 Those first few verses demonstrates that kind of God love. And if you want to grow in this kind of love, be assured God wants to help you by his grace and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So it might be a good idea to dig into that chapter together with your spouse and see how you're doing in relationship to that love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. So we make love our highest goal. And uh, because of this decision and by God's amazing grace, we plan to love each other better year after year. Now, I want to give you all, we're going to dig into some more tips. This is part two of Tips for Successful Marriage. And I just want to give you a summary of the first tips that we covered. And please note, when we're covering these tips, we're not trying to solve all the problems of marriages, and particularly where there's abuse, habitual sin, or unfaithfulness. If you have that kind of situation, we encourage you to get help from your pastor, your rabbi, or a professional, or both. And so please do that if you're confronting that kind of situation. Tip number one was God was and is at the center of our relationship. This is very Jewish because Yeshua said, 
that it, uh, he just summarized the two commandments that came from Torah, the five books of Moses, by saying, Moses said it first, God inspired him, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so we made a decision to keep God at the center of our relationship. We keep God and his word and his ways front and center always, and it is really the tip of tips because it provides a good foundation for a good marriage and for all the other tips that we will give you. Tip two, communicate and learn to communicate well. Poor communication is one of the leading causes of marriage difficulty. Number three, accept each other's personality differences and appreciate them. I've learned to appreciate that my wife is an artist and loves ballet, and she's learned to appreciate that I <laughs> don't love ballet, and I'm not much of an artist, but I, I like sport. And uh, tip number four, accept the fact that your spouse is, in a work, is a work in progress. And remember, you are too. And by the way, so that's the tips that we covered uh, last week in part one of this three-part series. But by the way, if you would like to listen to or watch all of part one or any other of our past broadcasts, I invite you to visit our website, reachii.org, and you will find all of the archived episodes of Your Jewish Connection right there at reachii.org. Right. And all the tips that we've given, you know, if you take only one of them, it really doesn't give the full picture of what we wanted to share about the different things that we've learned. And all the tips we're giving you is also not a complete list of all the advice that, you know, somebody can give you. But these are things that we came to learn as uh, in the last 40 years. Now, tip number five is make sure to have fun together. And laugh at yourselves <laughs> because we're all very funny at times. Well, I remember when we first got married and different people were giving us advice. I, I, truthfully, I don't remember any other advice except for one. And that was my sister-in-law told me, you know, make sure to keep the fun and the, uh, you know, joy and the spice in your marriage. Yeah. And... I thought when we got married, we had lots of fun and spice. And, and I, you know, you feel like this is going to continue forever. But really, you have to, you have to nurture that also. You have to because, make a decision. Yeah, because the busyness of life, you know, will start uh, take you each in different directions or maybe in the same direction, but you'll be only speaking about things you're trying to solve, you know, maybe financial issue children issue or other things. You can kind and, of become like business partners rather than best friends and lovers. Yeah, so you have to, you know, take time to stop all that and to to just do something you enjoy. And it's a good idea to to find a few things that are like your family or your, your you know. Your marriage tradition. Y- your tradition. For us, we love hiking and we love to be in nature and so this is one of the way that we love to have fun together and stop everything else and just be out there. And it's a good thing because we get to do exercise. We enjoy beautiful nature. And we also use that time to have prayer walk or, or discuss different questions. That I we love it. Discuss. It's not only fun, but it is fun plus. Yes. And, and so, you know, when you're... Schedule is very crazy. Make sure to take time to slow down and to look at each other. I remember one time uh, after we had moved to Belarus with our four kids and we were starting a messianic congregation there. And, lots and there of was different a, ministry initiatives. That was yes, like, and learning wow, the language, so many needs. learning the culture. It was overwhelming. So we were so busy in all different directions. And then after a while, I, I remember, uh, you know, we, we started to grow a little bit distance, mm-hmm. distant from each other. Mm-hmm. And, and we would meet, you know, just to discuss things that were urgent. And then, bang, we were going in our own direction. And, and then I felt, like, so lonely. And I said, I just realized, we don't look at each other in the eyes anymore. 
And I remember telling you that and starting to cry. And that was a, a moment that we remembered because after that, we, we definitely made some changes. I love looking in changes. your eyes. <laughs> and uh, we did make those changes. And I'm so glad that we did. You know, it's a very Jewish thing. Uh, humor is a very Jewish thing. And to be able to laugh at circumstances in ourselves. And we've learned that it's very important to uh, laugh at ourselves. You know, it's a lot better than complaining against each other or criticizing each other. Just laugh at ourselves. And today, just driving here, we were laughing. You know, we, we've known for a number of years that we're supposed to write a couple of books at least. You know, the Lord spoke to us about this. And uh, I think we're kind of, we got... Uh, we're book disabled and, and we got writer's block and we were just joking, you know, we're probably going to wait until we're 99, God willing, we live that long and say, oh, what's the rush? Just one more year and we'll get that book done. I and hope we I just, remember when we met and where we met. Yeah. What's your name? Anyway, so, you know, uh, it's just good to laugh at yourself and, um, just a quick introduction to tip number six. Enjoy sexual intimacy in your marriage and keep the marriage bed pure because having a satisfying and fulfilling sexual relationship is an important part of a good marriage. So you're listening to Your Jewish Connection. More on this subject in just a minute. Stay with us here at Faith Talk, WNIV 970. Welcome back to Your Jewish Connection, and we are talking about tips for a successful and fulfilling marriage, and I'm here with my beloved wife of 40 years. We just celebrated our 40th anniversary together, and four kids and 10 grandchildren later, uh, just last week, our youngest son gave, gave birth, well, not him, but his wife, gave birth to uh, our 10th, and we're excited, and uh, we love each other better, not more, because we've loved each other with all that we are for 40 years. Right, because love is a choice and it's a verb. It's actually an action. It's not something you just fall into. It's something that you grow into and it's something you make a decision to do and then you learn to do it better. And like anything you do in life, you can get better at it. Yes, and we hope these tips are helpful to you in having a fulfilling and successful marriage. And uh, we're going to pick up where we left off before the break. We're on tip number six, enjoying sexual intimacy in our marriage and keeping the marriage bed pure. You know, marriage is a lifelong covenant with your spouse and God right in the middle. It means that we should be growing in love. And not only that, we should be keeping our hearts, our eyes, and our bodies for our spouses. Sex is not just for making babies, but it is for making babies. It is also an important expression of love and intimacy in marriage. And uh, I want to share this scripture from uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4. Hebrews could also be called the book to the Messianic Jews. And it goes like this. Marriage should be honored by all and the marriage bed kept pure, for God will judge the adulterer and all the sexually immoral. I want to share a little bit about uh, this, about keeping the marriage bed pure, because when we came into our marriage, both of us had been uh, sexually active before. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, yes. And, and then after that, you know, we wanted to have purity in our, you know, intimacy. Mm -hmm. And sometimes there were some things that would harass us, maybe pictures or thoughts that came from, you know, past experiences. And we knew that this wasn't right, that this wasn't good, wasn't pure. And, and I know that, you know, we, we would put it before the Lord and every time before we would have intimacy, we'd pray and ask for the Lord that he would help us to have a pure uh, marriage bed. I'm glad that we developed that habit, and it did help us significantly. It took some time to, like, uh, get rid of some of the past, but uh, we were intent, and God helped us, 
<laughs> and uh, it's great to keep the marriage bed pure. You it know, takes this goes discipline, co- right? It takes discipline. Yeah. It takes controlling your thoughts, and it takes prayer. So us, you know, doing our part, and then the Lord does his part. You know, it goes contrary to the thinking of the world. How could you just be with one partner? Aren't we made to enjoy life a little bit more with many people? No. The most enjoyable thing is to keep yourself pure and keep yourself for the one with whom you have a covenant of life to be together forever. And God blesses this amazingly. It's not just religious words. It's reality. Yeah. And so, hey, so that means there should be no porn, no pornography, uh, no images of others, either uh, in your mind or in your bread. They have no place. Your eyes, your heart, everything about you, your body is reserved for your spouse. And you should seek to please one another in your marriage bed. It's not a selfish experience. It's a love experience giving experience. So seek to please one another in your marriage bed. And I want to say this, uh, uh, research has shown, and I believe the scriptures affirm this, that when couples, married couples, stop having sexual relations in their marriage, their relationships tend to become more vulnerable to anger, detachment, infidelity, and possibly even divorce. So Having a, a intimate and fulfilling sexual relationship with your spouse is God's plan, we believe. The fact is, as many of you know, men usually desire sexual relations more than their wives do. Yes, and God made us this way. You're like that more, and then women in general— a little bit less than guys, but God made us both this way, so we have to, you know, meet in the middle sometimes. Yeah. And, and there's another thing that's really important and that men need to understand is that for women, non-sexual affection and touch is really important. It's, it's sometimes as important as the actual sexual, you know, sex uh, action. Mm-hmm. So we we need to feel this. And and I know that, you know, sometimes women can be a little bit cautious to just become very affectionate because they may awaken the giant, you know, if they do. <laughs> so and sometimes we just want to sit or, or, or lay in bed and, and get an embrace and uh, and stay this way, you know. So so. Wives, remember that your husbands were made this way to desire sexual sexual intimacy more than you. And wives and husbands, remember on the other side that your wives appreciate affection that's not sexual. And uh, the win on that, guys, is not only are they blessed, but uh, they tend to want to be sexually intimate more when we're treating them that way. So, uh, you know, husbands, don't be over-demanding. Wives, try to get over your fatigue and headaches for the sake of having intimate sexual relationship with one another. And, uh, you know, just a little side joke, guys. You know, make sure you got plenty of Tylenol in the house and plenty of coffee so your wife isn't falling asleep after an exhausting day. Well, I have a little tip here. Sometimes when wives are so tired, it's because, you know, they've had to take care of the kids all day and then clean up and cook and do all this, and they're physically exhausted. So one little tip for guys, maybe when you come home from work, you know, don't expect your wife to serve you, but be there also to serve them. That's about love. Love is more about giving than taking. Exactly. And so, you know, people often ask, how often should we be having sexual relations? And I I don't want to give you any specifics on this, except I want to encourage you to talk it through and come to some kind of agreement. There is not one right answer on this. It's often different for different couples and different stages in your life. But uh, I also want to say that, you know, if your husband, if one of you, let's just say one of you desires sexual intimacy more than the other, then you're going to have to kind of really talk it through, come to agreement, and compromise. 
Yay, compromise. Yeah. You can talk about these things, right? Yeah. Of and, course. you know, in some segments of the Jewish world, it has become a tradition to schedule and look forward to sexual intimacy on the evening of Shabbat, Friday evening, because the biblical day starts at sundown. So Saturday, Saturday or the Sabbath actually starts when the sun goes down on Friday evening. And so in some segments of, of the Jewish world, it has become traditional to schedule sexual intimacy with your spouse on that Friday evening when Sabbath begins. Not a bad idea because sometimes we have the idea that all sexual intimacy has to start with something spontaneous. But it's also a good idea to schedule something and then have the spontaneous explosions as well, you know? So, okay, so keep that in mind. And uh, that's probably another reason I love the Sabbath. <laughs> and um, you might also. So, I just I, wanted to add one thing. Yeah. Is that, um, again, how men and women are different. So for women, if they've had, for example, uh, emotional stress, you know, bad news, difficulty with kids, uh, trouble at work or something, you know, they carry that back home and, and it's hard for them to switch off because in our brain, everything is kind of connected. For a guy, if they have these trouble at work or emotional situation, they can move from that box to the other box, which is the sex box, and it's easy for them. It doesn't connect the same way. Yeah. And, and so be sensitive to that. And for women, sometimes we need, when we have these emotional stress, we need to be able to, you know, release ourselves and, and sort it out first before we can jump out of that situation. So, Yeah, that's a good reminder. Men and women are very different. And I remember that book that was a uh, bestseller, Men are from Mars and women are from Venus. And uh, we need to understand we are very different. And uh, we need to understand the differences and appreciate and uh, play into those differences so that they're a plus. I just want to close with this. If you are blessed by this program, please let your friends know. And tune in next week here at WNIV 970 AM every Saturday at 930 in the morning and Sunday at 630 PM. And again, you can find the archived video and audio programs of Your Jewish Connection at our website, reachii.org. And this week, I again want to make available to you a free ebook, Spiritual Disciplines, to help you walk intimately with Yeshua and live a, live a fulfilling life. Because when you have a growing relationship with Yeshua and your spouse does, it's a win in your marriage. Father, we just thank you for the wonderful idea of marriage. It's a God thing, a good thing. And I pray, Father God, that uh, everybody out there who's married and listening and those who plan to be married, that you would help them build a strong foundation of love and the Word of God in their marriage, that they might have a successful and fulfilling marriage relationship all of their lives. Bless them in Yeshua's name.